What? <laughs> this thing's sick. Oh wow, oh, okay. This is awesome. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is cooler than I thought it would be. <laughs> that mechanism is really sweet. This is awesome though. I never thought that they would eventually uh, get back the foldable screens after like the Samsung uh, debacle. This feels like a really, really solid, well-designed piece of hardware. Um, the mechanism feels, it feels like it was designed with a purpose and it seems like they hit their mark there. Ooh. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Whoa, weird. The little like belly button looking camera on the front is a little weird. Um, but it's a lot sleeker than I thought and it does get basically flat flat, which I also didn't think it would do. But I also kind of love that it has like this old school like front screen, like a lot of the old flip phones used to have. So it's a full on phone display, almost like the iPhone. It's just completely display on the front. Seems like it's the same height on the ear as an iPhone, so it's not too crazy big like an iPad. Um, yeah, it's weird. I like the touch screen. That's cool. So I just pulled up like a quick little website on uh, just looking at different recipes and stuff. I like how it's like very seamless. The thing that isn't bothersome to me, which when I was reading the news about it, like I was worried that the like the hinge and the screen like would like uh, be overly obtrusive. I don't think I'm gonna mind that, but maybe let's play a YouTube video or something. Oh, so you see a lot of black. Where's 007? Yeah, this is a lot prettier than I thought it would be. Yeah, I, don't, I think the screen is, is pretty good. The world's moved well, it's kind of black right here, but the screen actually goes from here to here. So most of this part and this part are all black. And that's like a, like a large portion of the phone. I will say the crease where it folds, it, you kind of can feel the crease there. It's not completely seamless like an iPhone, but I guess that's also what you get when you get a foldable phone. Would it be cool if like whatever you were looking at would it pop up on the screen and outside? Uh, maybe there's like a feature in the settings for that. If I get nostalgic, one of the most fascinating thing was like, it was a flip phone. With your single hand, you could just like flip it up. Uh, this is not easily openable. Like if I want to do it, like I have tiny fingers. So uh, if I want to like do it, it's a little bit more effort than like normal. Yeah, I can pretend that I'm making a call and like hang up. Yeah, it's just like, I don't know, it doesn't, I don't think my hands are that small, like average size, but it doesn't really, uh, doesn't really feel <laughs> feel as, as um, seamless to open and close. The hinge feels a lot um, like tighter than the old one. And especially I remember used to be able to like fling open a flip phone. Um, and I don't want to do that with this because I feel like that would probably break it or I would drop it. Yeah, see, it just doesn't, doesn't close very well. You know, when I'm holding it like this, uh, you know, the original razor was so light and so thin, you didn't really, you felt like you didn't have to hold it that firmly. This one, because there's so much weight sort of at the top, I feel like you got to put your finger like this, and I would feel uncomfortable about closing it with one hand. I mean, that was some of the fun of the original razor. You could just kind of snap it close. I think that this would probably fit in my pocket a lot better than my current phone does, um, just due to the compact size when you're folding it up. It's kind of heavy, too. Um, I mean, it feels good just because um, it's smaller than if you don't have the phone, um, if you can't fold it. Um, usually my phone kind of like goes up a bit and because it's folded, it won't right up in your pocket. So yeah, I definitely like that. It's a lot smaller. Um, it's probably not that much thicker um, than my current phone. I don't feel in my pocket as much as I feel my iPhone, my iPhone 10. Um, the smaller form factor helps in the pocket for sure. If I had to say something I don't like about it, I mean, it does make a little interesting sound when you do bend it. I'm not sure if that's normal or if it takes a while to get broken into. Sounds like old shoes. <laughs> 
yeah, it doesn't feel as like, I don't know, as modern as the other smartphones that are out there, even though it has a foldable screen, like the design itself, getting rid of the foldable screen, the design itself feels kind of dated. Mm, yeah, it doesn't flip as nicely. No, it doesn't have that like feeling. It's a little bit slower. I think that I'm not, yeah, I think it, it is a little light on cameras. As someone who loves a phone case though, it kind of bums me out. Like I can't put a case on this probably. Like, can you get them customized? I'm gonna go full Paris Hilton. I don't want it bedazzled, but like, could you get it like drawn on or um, just jazz it up a smidge? I don't like this though, cause it's like, we're all used to having smartphones that don't have a bumper. So I don't want that there. How much would you pay for a phone like this? For this? Uh, especially with a flexible display, I would say I'd probably pay about $2,000 for this phone. 2000 bucks? Yeah, 2000 It wouldn't surprise me if it, if it was around that price. Tops, 800 Uh, I mean, in theory, like, if it was done really well uh, and it had smart smartphone but, like, felt as good as a Razer, like, I'd pay, like, upwards of 1000 But, like, yeah, now that I've kind of felt it in my hand, I... I don't know. I don't think that I, I don't think that I would buy this really under any circumstances. <laughs> 500 to 600 range. Ooh, that's a tough question because I make monthly payments on my iPhone, so I barely even know what the actual retail price is. Um, although I feel like I would probably pay in the ballpark of like $600 for this. I would pay like 500 total maybe. 600 but I don't think I'm ready to buy this just yet. I think there's still some kinks that they can work out first and I wouldn't buy the first model. Pay for it? Oof. Maybe 600 I think. Maybe 700 Anything past that I would say, you know, might resort to the iPhone. Hopefully it's not more than this. What? <laughs> uh, what if I told you it was 1500 bucks? Yikes. I think I would rather just look at it in a display store than actually buy it. <laughs> okay, it costs fifteen hundred dollars. Um, I guess that doesn't shock me. Again, I don't pay attention to like the MSRP of phones anymore. I'm just caught up in like what my monthly payment is. So that doesn't seem that shocking because I'm pretty sure the iPhone uh, 11 Pro is probably in that range or somewhere around a thousand dollars. But like for that amount of money, I wouldn't bother getting this now. I'd rather wait till we have a couple more years of foldable screens behind us and they've been able to like work out all the kinks and make it really smooth and doesn't feel as weird and foreign to us. No, I would not pay 1500 for this phone. <laughs> 1,500? Yeah, definitely not gonna buy this. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Um, even the second model I might not buy <laughs> if it's $1,500. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the price should go down like in a few years. Yeah, I, no, I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't buy it. <laughs> but I wanted to buy it, if that makes sense. <laughs> You're more about the idea than that. Yeah, exactly. I, I really wanted to like it. For this phone being $1,500, wow, that's, that's a shocker actually. <laughs> Especially for something like new technology like this, like $1,500, wow. Yeah, I could definitely see this flying off the shelves for that price point. Because if you told me it cost fifteen hundred, I wouldn't be surprised. And I think that I think that it's obvious. I don't think that's going to compete against the you know Apple and Samsung flagships. But I think there's definitely a group of people who'd be willing to pay fifteen hundred for this. I would say that. Uh... Uh, that is not a price I would pay. I think for people who are early adopters who just have to have something that's that's really hot and really new, you can see them paying that. I mean, there's a small percentage of people paying phones that are over thousand dollars. But uh, I think the problem with that problem with this phone being in that range is a lot of the like the Galaxy Note, the iPhone 10, and beyond that, iPhone 11. They have just a lot more to them as far as features go and productivity and why people really buy the phone rather than it just looks nice. So I think that they uh, put themselves in a difficult position there. Also, because it is only available for Verizon, I mean, that's another thing we haven't seen for years when you have these care exclusives. So that does box, you, box, box Motorola in as well. So I think they have a hard road ahead as far as selling a lot of these, but I suppose that's probably not the intention anyway. I don't know. If, you, if they were like, oh, you can do you can make it so that you can design your own custom case. And then I'd really think about it, but then 
then you'd have to pay for it again to like switch it up again. See, this goes back to the bedazzling problem. Once you bedazzle, like you gotta just like scrape them all off and like start over again, then your phone's all jacked up.